Welcome to Making Stuff with Chris Dayhut and our segment titled This Maker's Tool. For today's tool, we're going to be taking a look at the dial indicator. Dial indicators, as their name implies, have a dial with graduations that allow for accurate measurement of tiny details. Through gearing, it can show you a man-readable value representing a very small distance. For example, you can barely see the thickness of a piece of paper. Yet with a dial indicator, you can easily measure that thickness with the naked eye. Think of it as a visual distance amplifier. Anyone working with high precision components that often have to fit together will most likely use a dial indicator. Furthermore, anyone working with mechanical machinery or devices will often use a dial indicator when assembling or servicing those devices. The first dial indicator was invented by John Logan, a watchmaker from Waltham, Massachusetts, and patented it on May, 5, May 15, 1883. He called it an improvement in gauges, which I just love that statement. And it was designed to measure small distances and angles with an easily readable dial. And it's standing the test of time to this day. Let's take a look at a few defining attributes of a dial indicator. As the name implies, it has a dial with graduations on it that allow us to read that dimension or amount very easily. Now in this particular example, you'll notice that there are actually two dials. The larger one, which in this case is graduated in one thousandths of an inch increments, but then there's the smaller dial over here that's counting the revolutions of the larger dial. That's very handy when you're measuring larger objects or features. This example is an inexpensive dial indicator. The brand name is Made in China, and it has one inch of travel, and the resolution is one thousandths of an inch. These are very common. This particular unit I've picked up a number of years back. It's made in uh, the Czech Republic. It is a metric dial indicator. It has a total travel of three millimeters, and each graduation is 0.01 millimeters. This one's much more accurate, I think, than this economical one. Another feature that you'll see on some of these, this has metal clips where you can set the allowable range that your measurements should be in. And that's great for quality control purposes. This one has larger red indicators, but it's a little finical to work on the dial here. They're very tiny little knobs to turn these. This particular unit is another uh, dial indicator, but it has a very unique feature. You'll notice that isn't the plunger. That's the lock to keep the dial from rotating. The plunger comes out the back, so you use it in this orientation. This particular model has 200 thousandths or 0.2 inches of travel and it is a one thousandths of an inch increment. This was my first dial indicator that I purchased close to 50 years ago and it's served me very well throughout its lifetime. For a quick price comparative I went to the Starrett website which is a leading manufacturer here in the United States. This particular dial indicator is very similar to the model I was showing you with one inch of travel and a dial reading of zero to one hundred with a one thousandths of an inch graduation. Price three hundred and twenty four US dollars. This is the closest match to my back plunger dial indicator I showed you a moment ago. It lists for five hundred and seventy nine dollars and it has a zero fifty zero dial with a one thousandths resolution and 0.2 inches of travel. 
Dial indicators are used to measure a variety of attributes or features. Some of these features include distances, thicknesses, flatness, diameters, etc. They can make static measurements as well as dynamic measurements, such as mechanical devices that move. Here are a few examples of measuring different objects and different ways of measuring. This is measuring the thickness of a piece of paper. You'll notice that it's showing that paper is 0 .003 inches thick. Pretty common for normal paper. Here's how I would measure the thickness of a steel scale, measuring the diameter of a shaft, and this would also be very common in situations where you're doing comparative measurements. First you would measure a master gauge pin, and then your work pieces that you're producing, you would run under the plunger and see if it is within range or close to the master gauge. In this example, you'll see several features measured on a single workpiece without changing the setup. Here we'll measure the first step, then the second step, and then just by rocking the base or rocking the object on this precision ground surface, I can see if the part that I'm making, in this case the 3D printed object, has a flatness or a problem with flatness. And here we can see my 3D printer did not make a very good flat object. In this demonstration, I'm showing you the slop in my drill press's quill, how much movement it has side to side. And then we'll measure how much runout is in the chuck that is on this particular drill press. And in both cases, those are not really impressive numbers. Dial indicators are not for everyone in every shop. They have their purpose and application where they are a great choice to use. They are very handy for anyone working with mechanical machinery that requires inspection and adjustments. While I started using them as a machinist nearly 50 years ago, I have used them continuously for many other purposes in the 50 years since then. So with that, hopefully you've got a little better idea of dial indicators and some of their uses. If you enjoyed this video, I would greatly appreciate it if you could subscribe, give me a thumbs up, or drop a comment below and let us what you liked, what you didn't like, or what you would like to see more of. Thanks so much for spending time with us today, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Many things are better even now Wonder where she's been and how